Humphrey Adebayo. And of course, the lecturer for the day. Please put your hands together one more time. One more time, please put your hands together again. Before we get seated, allow me to respectfully invite the chaplain, Covenant University, Prophet Pastor Kayade Martins, for the opening prayer. Please put your hands together. As they come. Let us pray. Our dear Father, we give you praise and glory. We thank you for your good end of grace. This is the day you have made to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for this inaugural lecture, and we ask, Lord, that you take preeminence from this beginning to the end of it, and at the end we shall have every reason to give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Please put your hands together as I invite the Covenant University Band to lead us in the National Anthem and the Covenant University Anthem, respectively. of youths flying high on covenant wings. Wisdom calls for change, inspired on fire, with courage marching on in grace. God's own arrow shot for glory. Covenant generation arise, light and knowledge to shine. Glorious foundation stone, leadership skills to show, departing from knowledge to empowerment, legalism to realism. We 
wisdom calls for change. In spite of fire, with courage marching on in grace, God's arrow shot for glory. Thank you very much, the Covenant University Band. We may all please be seated. Once again, welcome to the 24th inaugural lecture tagged Affordable and Sustainable Housing, a practical approach to total building construction. To establish the protocol for this event, I count it a privilege to acknowledge the Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents, Dr. David Oyedepo, Vice President Education, Living Faith Church Worldwide, Pastor Mrs. Faith Oyedepo, Esteemed members of the Board of Regents present, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Abiodun Adebayo, the Registrar, Dr. Olua Shegun Omidira, other principal officers of the university, deans of colleges and school of postgraduate studies, the inaugural lecture, lecturer of the day, members of the university senate, faculty and staff, distinguished guests, and of course, members of the lecturer's family. Kings and queens in Hebron, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Welcome one more time to the 24th inaugural lecture here at Covenant University. Allow me at this time to respectfully invite the registrar, Covenant University, Dr. Oluwashegun Omidira, to bring us the welcome and, of course, introduce key officers of the university. The Chancellor of Covenant University, Dr. David O. Oyedepo, the Vice Chancellor, Covenant University, Professor Abiodun H. Adebayo, please permit me to stand on the just established protocol. Universities of our kind are set up to provide answers to the myriad questions in existence. And that is why at this particular time today, the 24th inaugural lecture in Covenant University, answers will be coming for a particular question in our lives as, as a people in this country. Covenant University is set up to be able to look at matters objectively and also provide answers that will stand the test of time. In our nation today, we have many things in abundance. For example, we have mineral resources that in abundance. For example, climate and, and weather in abundance. We are one of the best climate and weather in any part of the world. But in like manner, we also have many questions that also in abundance. What we don't have most of the time is the answer. But today, through the inaugural lecturer of today, we will be hearing from him answers to a particular challenge that we have in this country, and that is the question of affordable and sustainable housing in Nigeria. And I know that today the inaugural lecturer will be taking us through his journey in the academia from the beginning up to this time and what God has used him to be able to contribute to living. On this note, I welcome each one of us to this 24th inaugural lecture that promises to be a time we all remember for good for a long time, in Jesus' name. Now, permit me to introduce persons on the high table this afternoon, beginning from my extreme left. And I was talking about, well, the person at the extreme left, that's the uh, master of event, if you like, call uh, mistress of event, that's Dr. Ada Peters. Next to her is the chaplain of Covenant University, Pastor Kayode Matis. <laughs> Sitting next to him is the Dean of Student Affairs, 
in the person of Professor Conrad Omoyimi. Next to the Dean of Student Affairs is the Director of Financial Services, Pastor Babatude Onotola. After the Director of Financial Services is the Director of Center for Learning Resources, Dr. Mercy Iroa Ganachi. Permit me to jump the inaugural lecturer of today who will be appropriately introduced to us at the right time. Let me go to, the, to, my, far, to my extreme right. And there we have, seated at the extreme right, the dean, that's the host dean of today, College of Science and Technology, Professor Temida Yomotosho. Next to him is the dean of College of Engineering in the person of Professor David Omole. Next to the Dean of College of Engineering is the Dean College of Management and Social Sciences, Professor Uwaloma Uwigbe. <laughs> After him, we have the Dean of College of Leadership Development Studies in the person of Professor Olujide Adekeye. <laughs> After him is the Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, Professor Akan Williams. <laughs> Respectfully, I also Introduced to us today, the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor Abiodun H. Adebayo. On this note, one more time, you are most welcome. Thank you very much, the Registrar of Covenant University, Dr. Oluwashegun Omidiora. At this time, allow me to respectfully invite the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor Humphrey Adebayo Abiodun, for his welcome remarks. Thank you, the Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents of Covenant University, Dr. David O. Oyedeko. Please kindly permit me to stand on the already established protocols. Today, I'm delighted to welcome you to our 24th inaugural lecture series. Covenant's inaugural lecture series was instituted to celebrate the significant milestone of attaining the professorial height in academia by our esteemed professors. Moreover, it is to acknowledge and showcase the academic accomplishment and by extension, create awareness of the university's research prowess. It also aimed at providing sustainable solutions to the prevailing challenges of our society. Today's lecture is titled Affordable and Sustainable Housing, a Practical Approach to Total Building Construction. There has been a significant increase in population, especially in urban areas of the country, without an equivalent rise in the number of new housing units. The National Bureau of Statistics and industry experts have estimated the current housing deficit in Nigeria to be in the range of 17 to 23 million. Estimates of new housing output in the formal housing sector range from 100 to 200,000 annually. This figure is a far cry from the required 700,000 units per annum to accommodate the growing population and migrants from rural areas. Moreover, most of the new housing production is targeted at upper income households. And consequently, middle and lower income families are experiencing a dark housing shortage. The resultant effects are overcrowding, inadequate infrastructure, deplorable environment, poor living conditions, homelessness, increased poverty rates, and attendant social vices and human degradation. 
Furthermore, the increase demand for housing is further compounded by the high cost and lack of access to land, a high cost of building materials, delay in property registration, and absence of proper monitoring and evaluation of public housing policies and programs. Beside the macroeconomic challenges that are militating against affordable housing in Nigeria, critical market failures that negatively impact the supply and demand for housing also need to be addressed. The various governmental policies, institutions, and regulations that had been put in place from 1960 till date are yet to resolve the country's housing deficit. Thus, rethinking the approach to affordable and sustainable housing in Nigeria is very pertinent at this time. And as a leading global center of excellence, Covenant remains sensitive and committed to espousing viable pathways towards our aspiration for economic transformation and better quality of life in our quest to contributing to national development. I'd like to congratulate the inaugural lecturer of the day on this landmark achievement in his academic career. I'd like to thank you all for coming and God richly bless you. Please put your hands together once again for Vice Chancellor Covenant University, Professor Abiodun Adebayo. To properly introduce the lecturer for today, allow me to respectfully invite Dr. Okmeyemi Joshua to read the citation of the lecturer, Dr. Okmeyemi Joshua. Chancellor and the Chairman, Board of Regents, Dr. David Oyedepo, I recognize the established protocol. It is my singular honor and rare privilege to take the citation of the 24th inaugural lecturer of Covenant University. May I humbly request the inaugural lecturer, Professor Ola Bosipo Ishola to rise and remain standing as I take the citation. Professor Ola Bosiko Ishola Fagmele hails from Igbajo in Boluwadru local government area of Oshun State. By dint of hard work, character, and consistency, he's privileged to be the first professor of building in Covenant University. <laughs> he had his secondary education at Oyeme Kun Grammar School, Akure, from 1979 to 1984. And a year of advanced basic studies at the Federal Polytechnic Ibadan. He then proceeded to the prestigious Obafemi Awolowo University, Ilefe, where he obtained his bachelor's in building from 1985 to 1990. He further had his master's and doctorate degrees in construction management in the same university in the years 2000 and 2006, respectively. He attained the corporate membership status of the Nigerian Institute of Building and became a fully registered builder in 1996. He also attained the associate membership of the Nigerian Institute of Science Technology in the same year. He worked briefly in the construction industry from 1991 to 1992. Professor Fagbele started his academic career with the Civil Engineering Department of Ibadan Polytechnic as an assistant lecturer from 1992 to 1993, where he taught most of his structural engineering courses. A result of state creation in 1991 and the then need to develop his motherland, he transferred his service to Oshun State College of Technology, SLK, in March 1993 as lecturer three. Firstly, in the civil engineering department and later went to establish the Department of Building Technology and Quantity Surveying. He then rose through the ranks to become the principal lecturer in the year 2005. He joined the Department of Building Technology Covenant University in 2007 as a senior lecturer, and he was promoted to the rank of associate professor in 2013 and full professor in 2015. He was listed amongst the first 500 frequently 
frequently cited scientists in Nigeria in the years 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018 editions of the World Google Scholar Citation Index. And he has published over 80 articles, both locally and internationally. <laughs> Professor Fagbele is an assessor and reviewer to many international and local journals. He has successfully supervised six PhDs and six PhDs yet to be completed. He is an external examiner to quite a number of institutions, home and abroad, amongst which include University of Lagos, Obafemi Awo University, Cape Peninsula University of Technology, South Africa, University of Johannesburg, South Africa, University of Salford, United Kingdom. <laughs> Professor Fabile is a resource person to both National University Commission and the National Board of Technical and Education and participated in accreditation of building programs of many universities and polytechnics in Nigeria. Professor Fagbele is a resource person to both National University Commission and National Board of Technical Education. He has served as Osunsi Chapter Chairman of the Nigerian Institute of Building from 2003 to 2006 and the Nigerian Institute of Building Science Technology from 2001 to 2007. He is past and current Head of the Department of Building Technology Covenant University. He has served as head of many units and committees of the university and still actively serving. He is the lead researcher to a number of research clusters of the university. And on the spiritual scene, he has served in various capacities, amongst which are Pioneer Secretary of the Standing Committee. Cathedral Church of St. Matthew's, Ejesha North Diocese, Anglican Communion, Ejebu Chesha, State, from 2009 to 2012. Vice President and President, Full Gold School Businessmen's Fellowship International, Ejebu Chapter, 2004 to 2006, and 2006 to 2008, respectively. Assistant Pastor, Winner Satellite Fellowship, WSF, Living Faith Church, Duplex A4, New Estate, Kenan Land, 2014 to 2018, and Cell Minister of the same WSF from 2019 to 2021. Professor Fagbele is happily married to Dickness Ayo Fagbele, a lecturer at Ocean State College of Technology, SLK, and they are blessed with three wonderful children. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may we all rise with a round of applause as I invite the erudite and sagacious scholar, <laughs> Professor Ola Bosipo Ishola Fagbele, to take the podium for his, for his lecture. Thank you. Please be seated. Chancellor Sir, and Chairman Board of Region of Covenant University, Dr. David O. Oyedepo, the Vice President Education, Living Faith Church Worldwide, Pastor Mrs. Faith A. Oyedepo, esteemed members of the Board of Regents of Covenant University, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Abiodun H. Adebayo, the Registrar, Principal Officers, and members of Covenant University Senate, faculty and staff, erudite scholars, my lordship, spiritual and temporal, security chiefs and personnel here present, special guests, members of my family, both nuclear and extended, my in-laws, esteemed kings and queens in Hebron, <laughs> gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. For he that is mighty has done great things and holy is his name. Luke 149. Chancellor, sir, I am highly delighted for the real privilege the Almighty God has bestowed upon me 
to stand before this great congregation to deliver my compendium of accomplishment over the years and to highlight my current areas of research effort. This is the 24th inaugural lecture of this great institution, Covenant University, the fourth best university in Nigeria and the best private university in Africa, according to 2021 Times Higher Education Worldwide University Ranking. Uniqueness of this lecture. This is the first inaugural lecture from the Department of Building Technology, the first from the former School of Environmental Science, the first from the built environmental field, which also comprise of civil engineering discipline, the first from a professor of building trained in building department of Obafemi Aola University, Ilefe, since inception in 1977. I am also privileged to be the first Covenant University professor of building and the only one in the department for now. It is also the eighth from the College of Science and Technology. To God alone be all the glory for this attainment. Spiritual connotation of number 24. Chancellor, sir, this is the 24th regulation of series of Kerala University, and number 24 is very significant in the scripture in diverse ways. For instance, Revelation 4 4 refers to about 24 elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and having their heads in crowns of gold. This is unmistakably a sign of priesthood, implying that the number is inextricably linked to the heavens. It is used as a token of God's responsibility and work as the only wise one. The number 24 also represents a sense of balance between the earth and the heavens. In another dimension, when the four natural elements, that is the air, fire, earth, and water, are multiplied by the six days it took for the earth to be formed, we get 24. Furthermore, there are 24 classifications of priests and cantons in Luke Gospel, which has 24 chapters. Number 24 is therefore a very promising indicator of the future as it brings a lot of growth and wealth. Motivation for the research focus. Chancellor, sir, the motivation for my research focus started right from my first year in the university in 1985 at OAU Lefe. As fresh undergraduate students, it was mandatory for us to undergo medical examinations among other requirements and a few private medical clinics were to help there to cope with the surge in order to move the university lifeline. The university lifeline said for the documentation. I decided to help for one of these designated private uh, clinics so as to hasten my registration formalities and for convenience sake. When it was my turn to be examined, the medical doctor of the clinic engaged me in a little conversation, having looked into my dossier and found the course of study as well as continent on my face. He has his staff to continue with all that students and took me out of the uh, took me out of the balcony of the first floor of the office clinic of the building and pointed to the large expanse of land outside. He then asked jokingly, What do you see? And I told him in a permit that I saw undeveloped land. He turned to another direction and pointed to it and asked the same question, what do you see? I told him that I saw a number of unoccupied and abandoned buildings. I asked him for the reason behind the alarming number of unoccupied and abandoned buildings. And he replied, 
that it was probably due to the financial inability of the owners to complete their structures or tenants' inability to cope with the monetary demand. He concluded that the prospect was bright for my chosen profession and advised me to secure solutions for these manners in the nation. The statement struck me, especially emanating for a non-professional in the built environment, and it has been mind-boggling for me since then. Chancellor, sir, the need to provide risk for this post program to go into teaching profession and also to pursue further studies up to doctorate level. This also prompted me to venture into research work in this direction with quality published papers in both journals and in both journal outlets and conference proceedings. The quest for solution to this challenge has also taken me to a number of nations in the world, including United Kingdom, France, United Arab Emirates, United States of America, Qatar, South Africa, and some of the West African countries. I am therefore elated to present my findings in this regard. World population and the need for housing. It's a project population of 7 billion, 844 million, 344. The world population is increasing at a rate of about 1.05% per year. Africa is the second largest continent with a population of 1 billion, 340 million, 598,147. While Nigeria is projected as the seventh most populated country in the globe, with a population of 209 million, 350 million, 244 as at 7th February 2021. The estimated increase of the current average population is about 81 million people per year, and there is therefore a need to provide a shelter for this the main population. Sustainable development goal and affordable housing provision. The SDG comprises of 17 goals to transform our world to a better living. Specifically, goal number 11 deals with sustainable cities and communities. That is, to make human settlements and cities sustainable, resilient, safe, and inclusive. This goal, SDG number 11, comprises of 10 points agenda, and three of these agenda focus mainly on the theme, on the theme of this lecture. They are agenda one, that is ensuring access to all, access to for her to adequate, safe, and affordable housing, and basic services and upgrade slum. Agenda three, enhancing inclusive and sustainable urbanization and capacity for participatory, integrated, and sustainable human settlements, human settlement planning, and management in all countries. And agenda 10, that is support least developed countries, including through financial and technical assistance in building sustainable and resilient buildings through utilizing local material. The main problem of Nigeria, the main problem of housing in Nigeria is not in its provision in most cases, but is affordability. We have so many houses there unoccupied. Reason, the price is too high for an RBA price to call. For instance, many Nigerians cannot afford the houses provided by the government, not to talk of the ones built by the private individuals and corporate bodies. There must therefore be a solution to this manner. Roles of public sector in sustainable and affordable housing. Two important factors need to be taken into consideration before addressing the responsibility of public sectors in sustainable 
and affordable housing in the nation. They are the land and the cost of housing. The land and the cost of housing. When I came here newly about 40 years ago, the road from here to Osongo, you can usually time is 14, 10 miles, 10 minutes, 10 miles, 10 miles, you get there, you can come back. Now, it can take you five hours, at times seven hours. Journey that's not supposed to be more than just 10 minutes. What happened? People have migrated from Lagos to come to this place in, you know, in search of cheaper land. You see them in the morning migrating to Lagos, then in the evening coming back like bats. Land is a key to the provision of affordable housing to the Nigerian masses. Controlling the cost of land is important for keeping the cost of accommodation down and making it affordable. So that's why we need the involvement of government. No researcher can do it because it is a function of you know, demand and supply. You can buy a land now, in the next 10 minutes, you can raise it to 10 times. When I came here, the land there was sold for 200,000, 300, maximum 400,000. It is now between 6 million and 25 million naira. It shouldn't be so. Government should come in in this regard. Categories of house is needed. Three main primary factors influence the number of housing units needed in a settlement. One, the population of the settlement, the number of people in each household, then the, in, the average income of the household. Look at the population, then you build as many as possible. When you have supply and surplus, then there will be less prior on demand and the cost of housing will come down. In case, you know, a place full of bachelor, this and that, I you that to build uh, duplexes, five bedrooms, who will, who will take it? Rather than take building one bedroom, two bedroom flat, that can easily be taken by young, you know, and growing uh, household and couple. The number of people in each household is also very important. And the average income of the household, look at what they are doing. You will agree with me that housing is a defense and lack of it is an offense. And the push for this offense is to push people to go into crime. I want to do this, I want to do that. So by the time this thing, you look at the income of average people, then you do it. There will be less prayer, then the crime to be this, to be that, will also be reduced. From these three groups of settlements that require significant increase in now seen that we also need identified. One, rapidly expanding settlement. Two, expected phenomenal growth and the existing settlement. If all this can be captured, then we have a better place in terms of housing provision. The concept of total building construction. Total building construction can be referred to as a complete delivery of a building or structure in a presentable and acceptable manner. It can also be, construction can also be uh, described as an act of building, assembly, creation, formation, erection, fabrication, improvement, arrangement of structure, edifice, form, figure, or shape. Construction is an ancient uh, human practice that began with the simple need for a controlled atmosphere to mitigate the impact of uh, climate change. According to history, human, settlement, human shelters were initially very basic and only lasted for a few days or months. Also, temporary buildings, on the other hand, develop into such refined shapes over time. Most stable institutions gradually emerge, particularly after emergence of agriculture, when people started to remain in one location for a certain period of time. The first shelters were simply homes, but later activities like food storage, 
and rural were separated into separate structures. The differentiation between design and construction started to emerge as certain buildings began to have abstract and uh, functional meaning. Understanding the abstract and general ideas, imaginations and mental impression of a particular set of instances or occurrence, among other things, will be ideal in addressing the subject of total building construction. A host of themes can be seen in the history of construction. One, one reason is that the product used are becoming more durable. Early construction materials, such as trees, roots, and animal hide, are perishable. Later, more sturdy natural materials like clay, mortar, and wood were used, followed by industrial materials like cement, concrete, metals, and plastic. Another is the pursuit of ever higher and longer structure, which has been made possible by emergence of stronger materials and a better understanding of how materials work and how to best use them. The degree of control exerted over the interior structures of buildings has become increasingly criticized, allowing for more precise management of air speed, odors, humidity, light, sound level, air temperature, and other variables that influence human comfort. Another pattern is the evolution of resources available to the building process, which began with human muscle strength and progressed to today's efficient machine. The current state of architecture is complicated by the large number of building materials and systems targeted at specific classes of building styles or markets. Building construction is well organized, including academic institutions who study material property and functionality code officials who implement and execute safety code and built environment experts who assess consumer needs plan, consumer needs, plans, and build structure to satisfy those needs. In a nutshell, the concept of total building construction could be viewed in the following stages. Primitive design, also known as Stone Age. Bronze Age and urban culture, modernized Stone Age, masonry construction, early construction, early concrete structuring, and timber boom metal construction. Now the practical approach. Chancellor, sir. The practical approach towards affordable and sustainable housing will be presented here from the perspective of the outcome of my empirical studies and research endeavors in the built environment with other researchers as well as my current research focus. This has been stratified into the two critical areas of my specialization that is construction management and material management. Construction management, this has to be divided into the following areas of endeavor, that is construction productivity, neural networks and cloud computing, budgeting and risk management in construction, housing management, and energy in building. Construction productivity. The primary aim of this process is to reduce, reduce construction time and cost to the barest minimum. I and you and I can run the same rate that the process differ. You can be reading at the same time, this and that, that you can achieve with less time. Someone can achieve less with more time. So this is very important. A number of researches, you know, have been conducted in this area. And the topics here, one, a system of raising productivity of construction crafting in southwestern Nigeria, the influence of training 
on bricklayers' productivity in Nigeria, impact of non-monetary incentives on carpenter productivity in southwestern Nigeria, a comparative study of time and cost performance of labor lists of contractors in the construction industry in southwestern Nigeria, assessment of effectiveness of planning techniques and tools on construction projects in Lagos State, and so on and so forth. We have the drawings here. On neural networks and cloud computing. The essence of this is to bring consumption cost and time down to the minimum. Here, cluster research was were carried out to provide insight to this aspect of construction process. A number of topics have also been generated in this regard. And the drawings, the diagram, you know, given. Budgeting and risk management in construction. Topics covered here include the following, which are aimed at increasing construction productivity. One, developing a realistic budget for construction project, lesson from Nigeria. Cost of alternative methods of acquiring sanctuary block for walling. Cost management practice of our construction firm and its influencing factor, lesson from southwestern Nigeria. Then risk analysis and management in technology. Housing management. Find the lasting solution to housing crisis. In addressing this field of endeavor, the following topics were also treated. An evaluation of the cost effectiveness of direct labor system on housing project execution in Lagos State. And an evaluation of traditional contract method on residential building projects. The performance of traditional contract procurement on housing projects. And so on and so forth. Energy in building. Two important research topics were generated in this regard with other researchers. And the focus are uh, estimating embodied energy in residential buildings in the Nigerian context and evaluation of energy use in public housing in Lagos, Nigeria, prospects for renewing energy sources. Materials management. This is the main thing. If you can control material, you can reduce consumer costs to about 20, 25 percent. A lot of research efforts have been channeled toward this field of specialization with a view to reducing the overall cost of building construction. Some of the topics treated here are teaching time reduction in material inventory, inventory planning in the construction industry, sanctuary block and brick production in Nigeria, prospects and challenges, the influence of anatomy and mode of seasoning on the strength properties of bamboo. The essence of this is to use bamboo as a replacement for reinforcement, for iron rod. It has been practiced, and the major aim of using reinforcement is to increase tensional strength because concrete is weak in tension but strong in compression. So to complement the two, that's the reason for doing that. And it has been found that the Tensional strength of bamboo is far more than that of a uh, iron rod. So if this thing can be, also we have a thing too that can be used as alternative in this regard. So research work has been conducted on it and uh, I did it with a number of my colleagues. Also an evaluation of the influence of node and strength, of node on the strength of bamboo, just to know the weight and the effectiveness of using bamboo as an alternative to reinforcement. Lightweight concrete element from bone palm not share. So instead of uh, granite and gravel, you can use bone palm not share, purposely to reduce the weight, and it also serves the same purpose. Properties of concrete incorporated cast iron art from cast. At one cast as partial replacements for, for cement. Instead of only cement, you can use this 
to reduce the cost of cement. Pulverized cast iron clay and carbide waste as alternative binder in concrete and mortar application for sustainable construction. Also, effects of partial replacement of sand with lateristic soil in sand clay ball. We have competitive eyes of concrete strength utilizing quarry crush and locally sourced quartz aggregate. Assessment of concrete durability in building, effect of the quality of cement available in Lagos, et cetera, et cetera. So if these things are given serious attention, it will reduce the cost of material instead of depending on uh, foreign material. And this thing can be achieved by the government through legislation, of course. Current side focus. In achieving affordable and sustainable housing, three components have been looked into in this regard. They are land acquisition, material performance, and construction process. Why land is out of the purview of any researcher, it's only government that can do that. The other two can be achieved by researcher, that is material procurement, then the construction process. And if these three components are well taken care of in any environment, the dream of affordable and sustainable housing becomes a reality. Overall consumer costs can be reduced by between 10% and 35% if well utilized. While land acquisition is outside the purview of any researcher, as I earlier said, the other two components are within the research, within reach of researchers, and the two, research, the two areas have been my research focus. Other contributions. Chancellor, sir, I'm delighted to intimate you that I have not only contributed my quota to research endeavor, I have also contributed in building consumer professional services, university administration within and outside communal university author, as well as academic mentorship, you know, as indicated in the booklet there. I don't want to stretch on it. Recommendation for improvement. The following have been suggested for an improved system. One, housing policy. The concept of sustainability and affordability needs needs to be adequately explained in policy formation to realistically achieve efficient housing production delivery. Government cannot just come and impose things on us. It has to be explained the need for it, especially you know, for the less privileged and uh, for the illiterate. Land policy. The largest percentages of population cannot afford high prices and no high price tag on land and are forced to settle in slum. I went to visit my friend. I was just going, 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 going. I thought he was going to sell me. I said, I cannot go again. I asked why. In search of uh, affordable land, it shouldn't be at all. Many people have gone to the slum. You think they are mad? They are not. Because that's what their money can afford. So if government can come in this regard and they can legislate it, it should not be based on the purpose of demand and supply again. Land should not be more than this. Anybody that says more than this, going by the you know, Land Use Act, 1973, government is the owner of every land. They can do that and it is doable. From there, you can have achievable land. Allocation of land passing should be based on local circumstances, not the highest bidder. Encouraging local content. Researchers should be encouraged to develop local building materials as alternatives to the foreign content. This could be carried out by sponsoring research and development 
in more ramifications and legislative compulsory patronage of local materials by the populace. This consumption jar, the foreign convert, anything they do here, they take it to their own base for researches and so that it shouldn't be. They are benefiting from us in Nigeria. Everything regarding tests should be done in Nigeria. It should not be taken to their own base. So if government can encourage these things, by the time you are doing defense, you just legislate it. All these companies must come and watch the defense. Then from there, it can be taken off from there. Coordinating agency. Creating a government body with the responsibility of fostering relationship among the stakeholders in the provision of sustainable and affordable house. Through various incentives, monitoring and evaluating all available all affordable housing projects should be intensified. Housing finance, subsidies, especially interest rates and loan administration subsidies, subsidies will go a long way towards making housing finance more available and affordable to the low income family. Go to the bank, you work for the interest rate. You say this is enough to kill one. So why are you pushing them? It should be friendly. Go there as low. The Federal Mortgage Bank established and not achieved the aim. So there should be concerted, serious effort towards this. All inclusive participation. The government should promote active involvement of civil society in order to address the needs and priorities of these of the vulnerable and thus contributes to good government. Encouraging real estate developers. Various benefits should be provided by the government to enable private housing developers to participate actively in the provision of low cost housing. Because the input determines the output. By the time they find it difficult to secure and some other thing, by the time they are coming out of this, it will be high that uh, only, you know, those that are symphony are money and those that live outside abroad that can afford this. For example, offering land as an option to private developers working on low and low middle projects should be intensified. Establish of construction gardens in tertiary institutions. Establish of construction gardens and open place of practical demonstration should be encouraged in other tertiary institutions. In civil engineering, civil engineering, we are using, we have defaced the place, we have defaced the wall, we have defaced the environment. It shouldn't be so. They should provide an open place for us where we can demonstrate our practical press. You build as it, you demolish it, you test this and that from there, the student gain prowess. Chancellor, sir, this will be given the priority. Not only Covenant University, but all tertiary institutions. Give construction garden, give them space to demonstrate their power, leave them to their world, and they will become better builders. <laughs> Acknowledgement. Glory, honor, and adoration must be given unto God Almighty for his mercy and faithfulness in my life from the cradle. I am grateful to the Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents of Covenant University, Ota, Dr. David O. Oyedeko, for yielding to God's mandate in establishing this university. I also appreciate the motherly advice and diverse impartations of the Vice President of Education, Living Faith Church Worldwide, Pastor Mrs. Faith Oyedeko, and all members of Board of Regents of Covenant University, Ota. My application goes to the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor Abiyo Adebayo, the Registrar, and my very good friend, Dr. Lucia Gomidiora, and other members of management for their quality role, quality role. My gratitude goes to the current dean of my college, College of Science and Technology, Professor TV Omotosho, the immediate past dean, Professor K. Wajanoku, other past deans of the college, the roles of professors 
They will offer other professors in the College of Science and Technology are deeply appreciated. The cooperation and love of my current stroke SHOD, deputy deans and colleagues in the former School of Environmental Study and the entire college are well recognized and applauded. I salute the cooperation and love that exists among the faculty and administrative members of my department, which I'm presently heading. The unfailing support and cooperation of the departmental technologies are well recognized. I appreciate the cordiality and academic zeal of the department visit lecturers and all examiners of the department. My gratitude is extended to all PhD supervisees. I would like to acknowledge the confidence of Professor D.A. Adesanya, who supervised both my MSc and PhD thesis at where you live here, and for his father's role in my life. Mission must be made of my doctoral colleagues who are coincidentally supervised by the same erudite Professor D.A. Adesoya. And I'm glad to report that all of us are professors today. Two of them are deans, and one has been elected as the deputy vice chancellor academics in Obafemi Award Lower University. I applaud the contributions of all academic gurus from my alma mater, OAU Lefe. My warm appreciation to all sons and daughters of Igajo, most of whom are well represented at today's gathering. Ewere Leleo. I must especially appreciate the leadership of the Nigerian Institute of Building, NLB, and Council of Register Builders of Nigeria, Coburn. I would like to appreciate the contribution of my secondary school colleagues of almost 37 years ago. They are also represented there. Similar appreciation goes to the OMF Grammar School General. I acknowledge the steady support and friendship of my university colleagues in my undergraduate days. I equally recognize the love and moral support of the leadership of Auguste Chapter of NIOB. I acknowledge the contribution of my noble colleagues from the various universities. I can see them here, Professor Adenuga from, Uni, uh, from Unilag, and so on and so forth. I want to appreciate the contributions of all the noble men of God and churches in my life. I humbly acknowledge the spiritual and moral support of the leadership of Anglican Church of the Risen Christ, Okiomiru Elisha. I sincerely recognize my esteemed colleagues, friends, and associates from various universities, polytechnics, colleges of education, and professional bodies in the country and across the globe. I extend my gratitude to the lovely members of my fellowship group, Winner Satellite Fellowship, Duplex A4 at Covenant University, in which I serve as a cell minister till March 2021, when the asked for whether I located to another apartment. I'm strengthened by the foundation laid for me by these three gurus, by three great men who are now going to build with their creator. First, in the order of mortality, is my look alike elder brother and a graduate of University of Ibadan, Mr. John. Olalere Fagbenle, who died after a brief illness in Kano during his mandatory national youth service here in 1987. Second person is my dad, Pa Samuel Osho Fagbenle, for his belief that the only legacy worth bequeathing to one's children in life is education. He did this religiously till he rested in 1996. Last is my mentor, brother, an eldest son of the family of 23 children, and professor of mechanical engineering, Professor Richard Lai Fagwenle, who joined the triumphant in May 2019. You are all greatly missed. Back to the living. Permit me to openly appreciate my elder sister, Bosede Adeiga, for lifting me out of the horrible pit in my darkest hour. I would like to especially appreciate my cheerful mother, Mama Munisola Abedifagwenle, for all her age-long labors and for believing in me in all time. I'm glad that you are alive, ill and ill, and vivacious, 
at over 92 years to witness to this historic event. Special mention must be made of my elder brother, Mr. Shikofagbele and wife, who look for their benevolent love and care to me at all times. I appreciate the leadership role and care of the sovereign firstborn of the family, Mrs. Ajibike Ayeni. It is extremely important for me to appreciate the steady parental roles of my elder sister, Mrs. Omota Yoladiko, and I love your husband, Mr. Yoladiko, in my life from the cradle. I salute the support of my big brother and the doyen of journalism, Mr. Atunde Fagbenle. Indeed, your simplicity, accessibility, and philanthropic gesture in all situations are deeply appreciated. The good, legacies, the good legacy laid for me at the Polytechnic System, Polytechnic Ibadan, and Washington State College of Niger Sauke, by my senior cousin, Engineer Kiyade Shui, and elder brother, Mr. Paul Aditi Fagwenle, can never be overlooked. You indeed provided a soft landing for me in these two institutions, including moral, honesty, hard work, and objectivity. I sincerely recognize the brotherly love of my elder brother and the traditional chief of our company, Proctown, Chief Dotun Fagbenle, the logo of the South Okeresi, Okeresi, Ibadjo, and why Sister Tegu Fagbenle, they are also here. Permit me to appreciate the one I sincerely, I sincerely recognize the immeasurable contribution of my in-law from both mother and mother's side. I must recognize the sound role of very, very Emmanuel Akanola Bufalashe of blessed memory in my wife's life since her cradle. I want to openly acknowledge the unfortunate support of my God-ordained partner, helpmate, and a co-pilot in the journey of life and mother of my children. <laughs> Lady Evangelist Ayo Fagbele, beautifully voluptuous, you are indeed a very pillar of support, a counselor by excellence, a woman of integrity, candor, affable personality, a quintessential lady of many parts. In fact, you have proved to me that money cannot buy happiness. Neither gold nor silver, but happiness comes from the little things partners do. You have shown to me that one plus one is always equal to one. No matter the distance, no matter the distance. Thanks also for tolerating my excesses in some cases. To you, my wonderful, articulate, and meteoric children, Emmanuel Olabayo, Deborah Mofin Folua, and Lydia Olua Damlola Fagunle. You are indeed a people stand, and I give thanks for your cooperation. I must also appreciate my son, Emmanuel Abayo, for helping me out with the technical aspect of this manuscript. I must also recognize my very good brother and academic mentee, Abraham, Mr. Adoko Abraham Olasheni of Architecture Department for helping out in the PowerPoint too. To the ubiquitous and infallible God, I say thank you. Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded me, who daily loaded us with benefits. Even the God of our salvation, 
Psalm 68, verse 19. Permit me to further appreciate God with this Yoruba song from stanza 3 of IOM 340. The English version is CH369. Jesu kilo read me no me together for the lecturer of the day, Professor Ola Boshiko Fabwenle. Thank you very much, sir, for the lecture. We may please be seated. May I now respectfully invite the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor Humphrey Adebayo, for the closing remarks. Please put your hands together as he comes forward. Thank you so much, the Emmy, the Chancellor, sir. I believe you have listened to the well-delivered lecture from the 24th inaugural lecturer of today. One more time, let's give him a round of applause. That was a well-delivered lecture. Congratulations and congratulations. There's no doubt that he has made quite a lot of recommendations today on affordable and sustainable housing for all. A lot of recommendations have been made on how our government will need to come up and bring about some reformations and implement policies that has to do with land, land policy, housing policy, even building local content as recommended by the inaugural lecturer of today. And but above all, he has also pointed us to that for affordable and sustainable housing, it is an all-inclusive in the, in the venture that we must all collectively put our efforts together in ensuring that we have a very viable and affordable housing for all. And what does that mean? It means that if you are not a landlord, you are also a tenant. Do I have a witness in the house? You are either a landlord or you are a tenant. Yes, you are growing to becoming a landlord, but you must also maintain and ensure the sustenance of the house where you are currently staying. If it's an all-inclusive venture, definitely you and I have a role to play 
in ensuring that housing is affordable to all. As landlords, we must also be very careful on how we jack up the house rents of even tenants that may not be able to afford that just because you want to make some money. So we need to all come up and ensure that housing for all is a reality again. One more time, let's put our wonderful hands together for the inaugural lecturer of today for a well-delivered lecture. So it's on this note, once again, I'd like to appreciate every one of you for coming and trusting God that you will have a very safe flight or return to your various destination. One more time, thank you for coming and God bless you. Thank you very much, sir, the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University. It will not be out of place to acknowledge the following dignitaries who have come to honor the lecturer of the day. First is Chief Fagwenle Oladotu, the Logunde of Igbajo Land, Ocean State. You're welcome, sir. We also have Professor O.A. Adenuga from the University of Lagos. Reverend Canon B. Owojuade, Professor Godwin Idoro, University of Lagos, Professor M. Dada, University of Lagos, Dr. F. I. Ape, Director, Nigerian Building and Road Research Institute, Dr. Daudu Adeniro Ogunsoya, College of Education, Deputy Provost, Builder E. A. Awe, Dr. Akin Aino from OGSA 1984 set. Builder Mrs. Akomolafe Oshun State Polytechnic. Engineer AJ Ayodele, Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, Abuja. Please put your hands together and many more persons who came to honor the lecturer of the day with their presence. To lead us further, allow me to invite Professor Temidayo Omotosho to bring us the vote of thanks. Professor Temidayo Omotosho, the Dean of the College of Science and Technology. Chancellor of Cornell University, permit me to stand on the already existing protocol. First of all, we'd like to thank God Almighty for the success of this 24th inaugural lecture. We want to thank God also for making today a reality for safety and the journey mercy for all far and near. And secondly, we'd like to thank the Chancellor of Covenant University for providing this platform of covenant for intellectual discourse. We also like to thank all our guests from far and near. Thank you for coming. We also like to thank family and friend and well-wisher. We also like to thank member of the press. We also like to thank every member of the college, faculty and staff that have rallied around to make today a success. We also like to thank our kings and queen, king in Hebron and for making today also a reality to God alone be all the glory. Thank you all for coming. As we tilt towards the end of this event, kindly know that at the end, we are invited to a cocktail right opposite the chapel at the CLR, the Center for Learning Resources. All members of Senate, invited guests, and the university management are invited.
right. Then immediately after the cocktail at the CLR, duplex A5 New Estate, members of his family, faculty, and staff members are also invited to, an invited guest exactly, to another, you know, treat at his house. <laughs> Thank you very much. To close us at this meeting, allow me to invite the Chaplain Covenant University, Pastor Kayo De Martins. Please let's rise as we pray. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Our dear Lord, we give you thanks and praise for all you have done today in this 24th inaugural lecture. We thank you for everyone you have brought from far and near. We thank you for your presence that have been with us right from the beginning of this inaugural lecture and as we end it right now. We ask, O oh God, that your presence will not depart from us in Jesus' name. From the inaugural lecturer to his family and to everyone invited guest and this entire institution, Lord, we ask, O oh God, that you will keep guiding us in the mighty name of Jesus. To everyone as they return back to their various locations, Lord, your presence will go in the mighty name of Jesus. There shall not be any evil report that will be accounted to this day in Jesus' name. And we ask, O oh God, continually your presence, your grace, your wisdom shall be available to all in Jesus' precious name. Every suggestions that have been given, every recommendations in this inaugural lecture, we ask, O oh God, that you perfect them in Jesus' name. And for both this institution and our nation, it shall be progress on every side. We bless your name today, Lord. Thank you and thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Right now, let me invite the Covenant University Band for the CEO. And immediately after the CEO and them, because of the rain, we will have the photograph session right here. And then the procession will proceed in reverse order. See you, Anton, please. Thank you very much, Covenant University Choir. May I now invite...
please continue with a soft melody whilst we take the photograph. Thank you. Students, please hold. Procession in the reverse order. Once again, we appreciate everyone for making out the time to be at this event. Thank you to the university management, members of Senate, our professors, kings and queens in Hebron. Thank you for your time. For the loved ones and invited guests and distinguished guests who also grace this occasion of the inaugural lecture, we appreciate your time. Thank you and may God bless you richly. <laughs>